Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ and Texas. Look at Texas. I mean, they are 0 and 3. I mean, where, where? I just don't understand. So, we put a tough Boise State team in their conference, and now Texas can't even compete. I mean, look at this. They lost to Notre Dame, which isn't an easy game, obviously. But then Cal, they lost at Cal. Then they lost to BYU, the newly added BYU. So it's good to see BYU giving the conference some competition. And then they got us. I mean, they don't have an easy road in this schedule. But, I mean, they got UTEP, which is a lighter game. Oklahoma right after that. I mean, they might actually have a losing season if I'm looking at this right now. I don't know, but let's just look at how our conference looks going into conference play because I think uh, this week does start conference play for the rest of the conference because they did lose to BYU already. Uh, so they're one to know in our conference so far. So who'd they lose to? So they lost the game already, but after beating Texas, so they lost to Arizona. It looks like it was a two-score game, lost by 17, so that's a three-score game. Uh, Oklahoma State is still undefeated. They're on our side of the bracket. Kansas State is ranked as well. They're number 12. Oklahoma with that loss to Iowa State. I mean, let's just look at Iowa State. Let's just, oh my goodness, they are 13 in the nation right now. And look at that. They beat Oklahoma and Iowa both on the road. And look at their schedule. They have an easy schedule. They have San Jose State, Kent. They have West Virginia and Boise. I mean, Boise probably is going to be their toughest game right now up to this point. So then Kansas, TCU, Houston, Texas Tech. I mean, these games are all winnable. And then Texas at Texas. I mean, that's going to probably going to be a tough game. Texas will probably have their stuff together by then. But, man, they have an easy schedule. They probably have the easiest schedule in our conference. Look at Boise really quick. So, Boise looks like they play Oregon State, Oklahoma State, which is going to be a tough game. At BYU is going to be tough. And then they play Iowa State and Texas on the road. I mean, these are some easier schedules because a lot of these teams towards the end, towards the bottom of our uh, conference here in this division, they're not doing so well up to this point. I mean, no, only three undefeated teams, but let's see Houston. Who does Houston play? So it looks like they kind of have a tougher schedule than the other two, but I'm pretty surprised to see how easy Iowa State's schedule is. So maybe this might be Iowa State's year, the year they finally get right in the Big 12. I don't know. But we are going into this matchup looking to basically build some momentum off of Albert Vick's last performance. He was pretty flawless in the last game. But Kirk Herbstreit is picking us at home. So let's get into it. Let's go. So I'm really fired up for this game because we remember the beatdown that Texas gave us last season. So here we go, starting it off. Albert Vick with a little bit of nerves in this one. Almost throws the interception on the second play of the game. So facing a third and eight. This time the pass rush gets by Rafael Wheeler on the end. So we force, they force us to punt right away. But back on defense right away. Josh Dunbar guarding that slot receiver makes a move on the football and takes this one to the crib. 4-6 and that's going to be a defensive touchdown for Marquette. And you know what's funny is... I don't even think we had a defensive touchdown all last season, and we get one already in the first game in conference play. So here they go, Texas, giving the ball to Tony Carter. And uh, this, uh, this offense is going to be kind of tough. But Bro. Allinger almost throws a pick that time to Vince Cohen. So facing a third and ten, Allinger is going to drop back in the shotgun, have all day, but gotcha, our defense is going to get to him and swallow him up led by LaRue Wiley off the bench so now we force them to punt the ball away and Ben Miller starting now getting the ball Albert Vick settled down just a little bit throwing an accurate ball there and on the next play Jamel Cooley on the wide receiver middle screen gets about nine yards so facing a third and inches giving the ball to Alex Brown and he's getting up to about the 50 yard line on the 10 yard carry so third and two once again and another first down picked up by Alex Brown and remember he's he's right now he's first in the Heisman so we want to keep this Heisman campaign going because remember he got snubbed the first year he got hurt for the last two games 
So they took him off the ballot. But then the next season, which was last season, he wasn't even he he finished top two, but he had worse stats in the first season. So this year we're definitely gonna be looking to get that two thousand yards rushing, and it's gonna help having a passing game, having somebody like Albert Albert Vic to take the pressure off of Alex Brown. So here is Texas coming back on offense, throwing the ball deep in Lurch cannot get around in time and gives up the big play so now texas is facing another third and seven this time ellinger is going to roll out to the left but the defense is going to get to him and we're going to force them to kick the field goal and we're going to have a touchdown lead going into the second quarter so now to start start off the second quarter alex brown getting the handoff up the middle finding an open lane nice blocking that time from the guards up front so facing another third down and 10 a couple of plays later finding ben miller on that slant and that's the thing man when i had christopher rubright at tight end last season this was the element of the game i was missing a tight end that can run routes and look at him once again getting open on the outside and like i said he he just can't be guarded i mean you look at all these routes he's wide open so speaking of wide open Kevin Oliver gets the catch that time and gets about 30 yards up inside the five-yard line. And on third and goal, Jimmy Ward finishes off the drive, and that is going to be a two-touchdown lead for this Marquette team in conference play. I mean, we're facing a good Texas team. They're obviously 0-3. They're slumping, but don't get it twisted. They're still there ratings-wise, but Anthony Jetter, Back out on defense, drops a sure pick. So Sam Ellinger is actually one for five up to this point. And we get them to punt the ball away one more time. I mean, we are shutting them down up to this point. So here's Albert Vick back out on offense, rolling out to the right. This time he's going to find an open lane, get to about the 30-yard line almost. So now facing another third down. This game has been all about third downs, but this time we cannot pick up the third. So we got to go for it on fourth. You know we... Just we, we want to actually step on Texas throat because remember what they did to us last year. And Alex Brown picks up the first down, getting up to about the 10 yard line. So facing a first and 10, the slant route is wide open. And that one's going to be RJ Schultz for his first career receiving touchdown. And that propels Marquette to a three touchdown lead, 21 points. And it's not even halftime yet. So here's Tanil Carter getting the ball. And I'm, I bet you they're really miss, missing Shane Bouchelle. I think, you know, replacing a quarterback like that has definitely hurt a few teams in Dynasty. And it seems like if you have that guy like Shane Bouchelle, even if the backup's just as good rating-wise, they just drop off the map. So we force them to punt one more time in that time almost an interception for the texas defense but we get another shot and we pick up the first down on a carry to alex brown up the middle so now facing a first and ten a minute and a half left in this first half alex brown's gonna find an open lane get the first down so now we're into field goal range a minute and a half the clock is running we haven't used any timeouts yet up to this point but here is cooley getting the ball making a couple juke moves juking the wrong way that time but still picking up the first so now there's 30 seconds left in the half jimmy ward's gonna find an open lane and push his way into the end zone and this is a straight beat down in the first half 28 point lead going into halftime and here comes texas they gotta make up for that i mean a horrible half but all we gotta do is play prevent defense we just can't give up too many big plays but we also don't want to allow them to nickel and dime us up the field so we're playing man this whole time just playing a safe defense and here is this texas offense this time hempfield is getting a nice catch that time for a nice 10 yard gain so now a couple of plays later reggie hempfield map gonna get it into the end zone for the touchdown and ellinger gets his first passing touchdown of the game but man our offense is just rolling up to this point after a nice return by our returner sets us up for albert vick to drive down the field a very short field at that jamel cooley getting the ball on the slant route so now facing a second and two alex brown finding an open lane 
and getting pushed to about the half yard line and Jimmy Ward comes in and finishes it off and this Texas defense just cannot keep Marquette out of the end zone and it's a variety of ways it's through the air Ben Miller on the ground Alex Brown Jimmy Ward whoever can get the ball is hot at this point and here is Texas back out on offense getting the ball inside the red zone this time getting it to Carter on the draw play almost to about the five yard line but facing a third and three inside the red zone this time getting stopped on the outside to meal Carter that is nice tackle that time on the outside and they do settle for the field goal I mean kind of a head scratcher I mean they're down by all these points they probably should go for uh broke pretty much I mean they got to get first downs they got to get touchdowns but instead they elect to kick the field goal and Marquette is showing no signs of slowing down Alex Brown with the run to the outside that time. So now two minutes left in the third quarter and they forget about Ben Miller wide open over the middle. And I'm telling you, I mean, so many weapons. Look at Kevin Oliver wide open on the whip route. He gets inside the 10 yard line on the juke. And I mean, this team cannot be stopped at this point. Once again, on the third and goal, this time they get pressure, and we do throw to the outside, but we do end up kicking the field goal, and <laughs> that's what I'm saying. They got to go for touchdowns, so if they would have went for a touchdown, maybe it could have been trimmed. They could have had a four-point uh, difference here, but now it's just right back to the old score. So now we're on to the fourth quarter, Texas trying to air the ball out. They pretty much haven't ran the ball at all this whole game. They've been down, and here is Williams getting the ball that time. And now facing a first and 10, almost inside the red zone. Ellinger's going to gotcha, try bitch. to roll out, try to get some real estate, but this time he's going to be swallowed by Big Todd Williams, and he continues that sack streak. And dating back to last season, I think it's been nine straight games that he's had at least one sack. So now five and a half minutes left in this game, and Paul Miller is going to pick that one off, and he is not going to be caught with that 97 speed but take a look at this i accidentally Bruh. hit the back juke on that one and i don't get in for the touchdown but alex brown finishes it off and that is gonna be a 48 spot put up on the board so texas gets the ball back late in the game just trying to do something here get on the board and here is their quarterback trying to I don't know why they're keeping them in the game I mean they're risking injury here I know they're 0-3 they really don't have much to play for at this point I guess that's why I'm probably keeping them in the game but here's Ellinger once again inside the 10 getting it to Williams breaking a tackle two tackles that is and he gets in for the touchdown so now they have one last chance and with the onside kick that one's gonna be recovered by Hughes and this blowout comes to a final score of 48 to 20 Albert Vic has another good game I mean doesn't turn the ball over nice and safe running the ball as well five carries 29 yards Alex Brown goes over 100 yards once again and Ben Miller what a good game he had receiving the ball Kevin Oliver does his thing as well but on the defensive side we were just shutting them down they couldn't do anything they couldn't stop us on offense it was just well balanced I mean it was just all over I mean that's the kind of game I want to keep playing keep the momentum going Red Johnson has two sacks from the middle linebacker position and he leads the team in tackles with nine solo two tackles for losses and he's turning into a little baby monster I mean Lewis Parker was our all-american but Red Red Johnson stepping up for sure so Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Texas Tech coming up next. Another Texas team, but this time it's different. A little air raid. It's going to be a little tough to stop, so we'll see. Let's get into it. Stay tuned.